Hello everyone, this is Kyle here with Pixel Wave. Today I wanted to show you guys how to set up maps properly from Substance Painter uh, into V-Ray. I'm a part of a few groups online and I see that there's still a lot of confusion with getting things to look exactly like they do in Substance Painter but in V-Ray. So today we're going to work with this floor material that I created uh, in Alchemist uh, during the demo. And I want to kind of keep this pretty raw for you guys and unedited just so you can kind of see if things go awry, how I fix them, um, and just kind of how I work and how I get this all connected. I'll show you really quickly here. Uh, we have a, just a, a floor. I've got a noise modifier on it. Ends up kind of creating some inconsistencies, um, which I like in a floor like this. Maybe not this crazy, but um, just for uh, demonstration purposes. And then um, Forest Pack, you can get their light version if you don't have it. Scatter some trees uh, to end up creating some shadows and breaking things up. Um, so let's go ahead and start with uh, connecting this up. I'm going to go ahead and grab a standard clean V-Ray material. We start from scratch here. And I'll grab these maps here and we'll drag these in. Now let's start with the normal spec gloss workflow that we're used to seeing in V-Ray. And then we'll jump to the PBR version uh, within V-Ray. There was a change, I think, in 3.4, 3.6, where it gave us the option to, to work with roughness rather than spec gloss. Um, but we'll do that second. Also, in the description, I have uh, the link to download these so you guys can work with me. Um, and those will remain free. So starting with spec gloss. Let's go ahead and just dump in diffuse to diffuse, reflect to reflect, glossiness to glossiness. Now we want to keep Fresnel, but we want to unlock it. And we're going to use the IOR map that's in here. IOR index of refraction generally controls a metal look versus a non-metal look, just so you guys are aware of what that is. And then down in maps, we need to pipe in a V-Ray normal map node, and we'll drop our uh, normal map in here, height in here. Okay, now this is where things go awry. You go to render and everything looks terrible. Um, some of these maps are linear, some of them are not. So we need to tell Max, and now Max is uh, uh, gamma corrected everything to 2.2 map wise. So we need to downgrade it to, not downgrade, but open it up to uh, a gamma of 1.0. Those are the linear maps. Those linear maps are the normal map, the gloss map, and the IOR map. So let's go ahead and do that. And I'll show you. Under the normal, let's start with this one. When we go into the bitmap settings or the node, we see the normal map here. We're gonna click on that and we're gonna say override to one. So again, we're going from 2.2 uh, down to one and we're gonna click, oh, this is kind of off here. We'll just click open and that's it. It's pretty easy. Additionally, what I like to do is take the blur off the maps. Now this kind of helps um, save time if you're rendering. Uh, when you blur a map, it helps with the AA and will help speed up renders because the render engine will have to use less AA and that's what causes the lengthy render times. So uh, I generally like to knock it down to point 0.2. There's only certain maps that I end up doing this on um, and I, I we'll go over some more actually. I'll show you some examples where I don't do this on. Height's another I'm going to drop down, but again height we're not switching over. We're going to leave that at 2.2. So the next one that we're going to switch over to linear is glossiness. So let's go to a 0.2 at that, and we'll override. And IOR, I'm not going to blur, and I'll show you why. And we'll, But we do need to override this one. Let's pull this up so we can kind of look at the material as we work. Okay, so here is the detail in the gloss map. Let's show you why I don't blur certain things. So all this detail that we have, these edges and things, I don't want blurred. I want them nice and crispy. Now, certain maps like um, this IOR, we don't have any metal in here, so you're not gonna have like something like a table where it has uh, wood and nails and maybe some brackets. Um, so the whole thing is just giant gray map. So this is why you don't really need to blur this because there's not much detail. Um, same thing with reflection, I believe. Yeah, same deal. I wouldn't end up uh, blurring that. Um, the diffuse I would, because that's got a lot of good information in it. So let's look at this. Yeah, see? See, I don't want to blur all this nice grass detail out and stuff. So let's do a point 0.2 on that. All right. One thing also I noticed, uh, by default, V-Ray puts our bump map at 30%. Um, now, it, we've already kind of got what we wanted the look of the object to be in Substance Painter. So it's not something that we're going to want to uh, downgrade, I guess you could say, or, or knock down to 30%. So I'll just kick that up to 100. Uh, sometimes what I like to do is I like to have my height and normal a little gnarly within Substance Painter. 
So when I move it over, uh, I can just drop, you know, if it's not too much, I would say, I can just drop it down to 75% or 50. I think you can do something like 200, um, but I don't know what that ends up doing into the end result. So I did, again, just generally like to make it a little more crazy height and normal wise, uh, and then I can go ahead and, and knock it down. This was already set where I wanted it within Alchemist when I created the texture, so uh, we'll just leave that at 100. One thing too, uh, I don't like how crazy reflective this is. So I'm just gonna knock that down to something like 25 and leave it a, a little more kind of rough looking. So let me go ahead and apply this. Not much is gonna change because that's what the material is set up properly. And we'll just take a quick little look at this if I can get this going. And there we go. So looking pretty good. There is a little more detail in the reference image that I had. I uh, showed you guys here at the beginning of the video. That's part of displacement. Let's go ahead and set up a PBR workflow and then we'll talk about displacement after that. So let me stop this. And let's get a new shader. Grab a new V-Ray one. Grab our textures here. Now start connecting them up. Base color to base color. Uh, oh yeah, down at the bottom. We're not gonna use gloss. We need to click this use roughness. This is the big change between the spec gloss and the PBR workflow. So roughness goes into roughness. We're not gonna use ROI and we're gonna use metal or metallic map. We're gonna pipe that in. Now the big ones that need to be changed again, uh, the linear and nonlinear. Uh, so we're gonna need to change to a linear map is the roughness and the normal map. And actually I need to pipe in our normal map. So down in bump, let's go ahead and change this to 100 like we talked about. I'm gonna go ahead and grab a V-Ray normal map node and we will move the normal map over and the height map over. Let's go ahead and remove some of the blur and we'll override to one. Now, same thing with height. We're just gonna remove blur. We do not need to override, but we do need to override the roughness value. And that's got information kind of like the gloss map. So we want to blur that one as well. The metallic map uh, are, are black and whites. They're linear maps or nonlinear maps. Um, so these we don't need to blur if you want to check it out here. Um, again, uh, you may want to go ahead and remove blur if you have something that has uh, metal and metallic and non-metallic uh, properties to it. Something like, again, like a table with bra metal brackets or something on it. Um, so I'll go ahead and I'll apply this and we'll pop our texture on. And one thing also that we need to do is under reflect, since we don't have a reflect map, generally speaking, you're supposed to turn it to white. Again, I thought uh, this texture was just a little too, uh, I guess, reflective altogether. Um, so I kicked it down something like 25%. And that's pretty much it. If we look down here, everything else looks good. Let's go ahead and uh, we'll apply this and we'll take a quick little shot of this. Let's see what's going on. So again, not much to change. It looks like we have a little bit more coming out of uh, the normal map here, but pretty much the same. That's as it should be. There shouldn't be a big change or drastic change from your spec gloss or uh, roughness or PBR workflow, excuse me. Um, so let's look at uh, what the displacement node does. Let me go ahead and make sure my render settings aren't crazy so we get something a little more responsive. Yeah, 1080 is fine. So when I turn this on, we'll look at what we have first. Um, there's a little bit of information, information, height information, and the normal information kind of help, but the displacement's gonna give us uh, a lot more. Let's go ahead and do something like an inch and a half, and we'll go to render. So there's your light cache. Immediately you start seeing edges, information kind of in the slate that wasn't really there prior to this. So that's kind of cool. And we'll let this guy go a second. So I'm not gonna let it go too long there, but point being here, uh, information that we get get a lot more protrusion of all the slate pieces themselves, which adds so much more detail. Now this one, I actually, just so you guys can see the displacement map, what you'd end up doing is taking the displacement 
dragging it in here. And then from here, we can take it and instance it into material and play with its properties. If you guys notice, I did a blur of four. If you do a 0.2 on this, it ends up really grainy and the slate ends up looking uh, super porous. Let's just show you actually, rather than talk about it. Let's just do something like this guy. So we notice it's kind of smoother. It is bumpy. It's not like super smooth, but watch this. What ends up happening is it ends up looking like a lava rock or something. It's just too much. So blurring the map out kind of helps. Yeah, look at that. And you walk on something like that, shred your feet up. So again, this is why we want to blur something like that. For the most part, we want to blur most of our maps, but some of them we want to use judgment and want to smoothen out some of the detail, especially with heights. It's kind of generally where I see it, or I'm sorry, displacement maps is generally where I see that the most. So you get the nice kind of soft edges into some of this. But again, this is case by case scenario. Um, it's your judgment call uh, in the end. So there you guys go. I hope you appreciate or uh, learn something from this tutorial. I'm gonna go ahead and have some cheat sheets down in the description for you, something you can download and just keep on your desktop as you guys are setting this up and getting more comfortable with these. Uh, if there's anything I've missed, please toss it in the comments or if you have any questions, um, something I didn't cover that's part of a workflow maybe within your guys' companies or just uh, something that you do uh, personally as you're working, uh, be more than happy to answer them. Two, if uh, you want me to go more in depth in a displacement mod, um, tutorial, I can do that as well. There's um, actually uh, NASA released some data for scanned uh, scan data of a moon that you can do displacement with now, which is kind of cool. Something like 25K or cra something crazy like that. But um, yeah, would love to do more of these for you guys. If there's anything you need help with within a V-Ray workflow, um, I would love to, to share this stuff and continue this with you guys. So uh, thank you. Like and subscribe if you found this helpful. Uh, toss a comment down if you have any questions. See you guys in the next one.